everybody locally and we pronounce it Rody House, which is wrong. <coughs> Gustav Rody was a, <coughs> a bookbinder from Leipzig in Germany. And by virtue of being German, it should we should pronounce it Oerder, but we don't. Um, it sort of got, got colonized to, to Rody, and so everybody lives with Rody House, but I'm sure they'd be appalled. Um, but anyway, the house was built in 1893, um, and it was built for Rody. Um, he was a bookbinder from Leipzig in Germany, and uh, he came over to North America in the late 80, in the 1880s, um, and ended up here. He started in Cleveland and then San Francisco, but he ended up here. A good time to come to Vancouver because it was. Um, Population was only 15,000, but the railway had just opened the transcontinental in 1887, and that opened up BC to the rest of the continent. And that made quite a difference <coughs> business-wise, so he set up his bookbinding business here and uh, did very well. And very soon he was able to afford to build a house, and this was sort of a suburb, it wasn't very built up at all at the time, but he built, this, he had, he, he built a house Designed by a gentleman called Francis Rattenbury. Um, have you been to Victoria? Yes, he designed the Parliament buildings, did he not? He did design, and he also designed the, the Empress Hotel. Um, he also designed the what is now the Art Gallery, who was then the court, courthouse down in the centre of Vancouver. So he was a big ticket architect. But he designed this house, um, we think, as a friendly gesture because they shared they were their offices were close by. Um, it's called Queen Anne style, revival style architecture, nothing to do with the historic Queen Anne, but rather um, the style of architecture, which is steep roofs and bay windows and, and so on. And um, he was a bit of an odd character. He, he was only in his mid-twenties when he did all this designing. Subsequently went back to the UK. He was from Leeds in the UK. Went back to Leeds left his wife and child destitute here, went back with his mistress, who promptly took a lover in, uh, in the UK, uh, who murdered uh, Rattenbury. So what goes around comes around in a way. Um, anyway, <coughs> whatever, he did some good architectural work. <coughs> um, the house um, was restored in the 1980s, 90s, and opened as a museum in 1995. None of the furniture is original. When they moved out in 1925, they took all the furniture with them, naturally. But when the house was restored, the people who restored it, um, and continue to do, um, begged, borrowed, bought, whatever, the furniture. So it's all of the era. It's all Victorian, late, Victorian, late 19th, early 20th century. So it's very authentic. There are a few original pieces this new post, Aurora, Goddess of the Dawn, um, is one of the original pieces. When they moved out in 25, they took it with them, but they ended up with one of the granddaughters. And um, she, uh, when she heard the house was being restored, she donated it to, um, to the house. So that has, was original. Okay. Would have been gas-fired, as uh, our gas lid, as most of the house would have been, or was, in 1893, but very soon they had electricity, so even the fittings are, uh, are genuine, in fact. But, but uh, they were replaced with electricity in, in the early 20th century. Okay, let's go through to the parlour. This is where they'd have done their formal entertaining, um, and um, they actually the piano is not theirs, but they did have concerts there, uh, here, for their friends. And in fact, we use the piano. We have concerts here twice a month. We have modern jazz Thursdays, uh, second Thursday of each month. We have chamber music, classical music on the second Sunday. So the piano is well used. Uh, it's not theirs, but it was, uh, by coincidence, um, built the same year that they moved in here, 1893. So Steinway Upright Grand. Um, we've just had it refurbished for five thousand dollars, so it's obviously um, worth a lot of money. Um, the 
fireplace, not original. When the road is moved out, the neighbourhood starts to go downhill. And they um, bricked up the fireplace because, or the people who took it over, because they turned it into a rooming house. And that meant a room like this would be divided up into four, and a table, chair and a desk in each one, or a bed in each one. So the fireplace was bricked up, but when the house was being restored, um, they decided to reinstall the fireplace, and this actually came from a local antique store. It is from the era, so it's pretty well what the fireplace would have looked like, um, although that, oddly enough, was not the original site for it. The chimney and fireplace were actually located on that wall originally. Um, for some reason or other, they decided not to do that, and that actually seems quite a logical place to put it. So, they raised a family of seven here, four girls and three boys. Um, this was the dining room. This would have been used a lot. Um, all meals would have been done here. The kids would have done their homework here. Um, some interesting things around here. That obviously is a picture of Queen Victoria. Notable not particularly because she was a cheerful person, but notable because that was done by one of the Rhodey grandchildren as a teenager. So it shows somewhat of a facility for art. While you're looking up there, the wallpaper, I'll qualify this in a moment, is the original wallpaper. And what happened was, when the house was turned into a rooming house, it was badly treated, paintwork sat on, wallpaper ripped off and so on. But when it was being restored, they found little patches of the original wallpaper. There's an outfit in the States that if you send a little patch of original wallpaper, they will recreate the rolls. And so every room we see from here has effectively the wallpaper from the original house. Those are the roadies, Gustav and his wife Matilda, he from Leipzig. She actually was from Heligoland, which is a small island off the coast of uh, Germany, in the North Sea. Oh, and while I forget, the, the, over where we were, just in that corner, um, they put their Christmas tree every year. Um, in 1913, as always, they put their Christmas tree up there. They lit the candles. Notice I say lit, not switched on. Um, in 1913, the tree caught, the candles burned, the tree caught fire, fell over and did a huge amount of damage downstairs. Um, fortunately, a fire station opened a block away the year they moved in. Horse drawn, but nevertheless got here quickly, because otherwise this is a wooden house and they'd have, uh, they would have burned the ground. So, to the dining room, to the um, main bedroom, master bedroom. Why here? Good reason for that. Although they installed for, uh, um, central heating later on in their habitat here, um, initially the house had no central heating. As we shall see, the kitchen is next door. The range uh, is right on the other side of that wall and that was lit 24 hours a day as a result of which this area of the house would have been warm. Notice the wallpaper, the same as it was at the time. Um, <clears throat> and behind me you'll see a washstand and so on. Um, we shall see upstairs a full bathroom, which they built when they moved in. Um, but unfortunately either somebody forgot or they didn't realise there was no water laid on, no drainage, no sewage, no nothing. And so we'll see the full bathroom there, which they couldn't use for five years, uh, and they used wash basins, chamber pot, an outside privy, and, um, and a pump, and so on. So, that was, um, that was somewhat unfortunate for them. It must have been rather frustrating. You'll notice the bed is small. At least it's short, by current standards. The reason for that, you'll find beds like this in Victorian times, a lot on the West Coast. That was because in those days people suffered from respiratory diseases. Bronchitis, asthma, TB and so on, and they tended to sleep in order to breathe more easily, propped up in bed with cushions, rather than taking the length of the bed, um, which we obviously do today. Here's an unusual feature of a house in those days, not particularly exciting, and we use it as a storage cupboard, but it's a walk-in closet. 
Rattenbury was unusual in that houses did not have walk-in closets in those days. They used freestanding wardrobes, double doors, probably standing somewhere like that with a rack on the inside. And this was, as, as, as I say, unusual, and we shall find these in every bedroom as we go through. Watch the carpet there. This room has changed, obviously, from its original purpose. Recently changed. It recently was a, van, uh, a veranda. Those two walls were, were open. But when the fire did a lot of damage, it damaged here as well, and Rody had this filled in and turned it into his study, his den. Um, and that's why we see typewriters and a sewing machine and that sort of thing and photographs here. In order to put this in perspective, this is Bark this is Barclay Square. We're here in that room there. You came in through the front door. This was taken in 1983. In the 1970s, the city of Vancouver bought Barclay Square. They were going to pull down all those houses. And a group of citizens got together and said, listen, we don't have many old houses in Vancouver. We shouldn't be pulling them down. We should do some preservation work. And so the city said, fine, we'll do that. So Rody House was preserved by an organization called the Rody House Preservation Society, of which we are a part now. That was taken down. These still exist, rented from the city. Those were taken down, but the roof you can see behind was this rather fine house, contemporary house, uh, called Barclay Manor. And that is a, um, a senior's day centre now. So the two houses. So the whole thing, the square is still owned by the city of Vancouver. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we, the volunteers, handle all of the interior work here, the exhibitions, the docent work, and so on. City is responsible for the structure. So it's holding the roof. That's not our problem, that's theirs. Going go upstairs now. The kitchen is here on the left, and we're not going to miss it. I'm going to come down to it from another direction. So we're going to go upstairs, but before we do, I'd like to point out this rather fine long case clock. Um, it's an eight day clock, it's just been wound up. The weights will slowly fall over the next eight days, at which stage we'll, we'll uh, wind it up again. Some interesting things about this it was actually built by a gunsmith from Wigan in Northern England, who was obviously a skilled um, artisan because um, if, you've, uh, if you've been to London or you've heard of the Victor and Albert Museum is one of the world's leading museums and there are a couple of his long case clocks on exhibit there, so it's obviously well thought of. Um, there's a good reason for them being, you know what they're called now, right? Grandfather clocks. Exactly, do you know why? No. Well, a little story there. 1867, an American was visiting the UK, or England at the time, and he stayed at a little pub in northern England, and the landlord of the pub told him one night, he said, you showed him a grandfather clock, what, but in those days a long case clock, and he said this funny story about this, um, it used to belong to my grandfather, and when he died, the clock stopped, it wouldn't work properly, and finally stopped forever. And um, the American was intrigued by this, and he went back to San Francisco, it was, and he was a songwriter. So he sat down and he wrote a song called My Grandfather's Clock, which I'm not going to sing for you, but the first two lines are My Grandfather's Clock was too big for the shelf, so it stood 90 years on the floor, it was taller by half than the old man himself, that way not a penny weight more. That sold, 1867, a million copies of sheet music. That was a big, big thing in those days. As a result of which, henceforth, they were called Grandfather Clocks. Ah. So, we'll go upstairs. Are these, are the windows, the painted windows all original? Stained glass. Yeah, the stained glass. The one in the in the hall is original. That one was damaged when the house was being refurbished and was uh, and is not original. 
So we're going to go through all of these rooms, with the exception of this room, which was a boys' bedroom for two boys. It's now our office, so it's not furnished in the style. We have two full-time employees, um, a, uh, a museum manager and a, uh, an assistant. You may have noticed a turret on top. Yes. That's, those stairs are up the turret. Unfortunately, we can't take you up there because they're not safe. I don't mean it's structurally unsound. They're too steep. And being a city building, we have to be very careful about where we let the public go. But that's just got a room for a desk. Um, Can I shove my hand in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a chair. Uh, and Mrs. Rowley uses it as a sort of little escape. So this was the two. Remember I said there were four girls and three boys. This was a bedroom for two girls, and it was the only girls' bedroom. Why? Two girls shared this. Tragedy struck the family pretty early on. Um, their firstborn went out for a walk one day at the age of five, ate some berries and died the following day of poisoning. Oh, their second true. daughter, here, trained at St Paul's Hospital, which is a local hospital here, um, swapped shifts with a friend one Saturday night and was murdered by a patient. So they lost two daughters in tragic circumstances. Ended up with three boys and two girls. So, notice the wallpaper, same as it was at the time, recreated. Um, wow. Nice room this, on a sunny day, the sun shines, it faces west, and it's really a gorgeous room, not particularly bright today. And so, th through to the sewing room, Mrs. Rowley was a seamstress by training, and, um, as a side, she was only four foot eight. She was a teeny lady. That chair was built especially for her. Um, but this was a nice room. In those days, English Bay is not too far down there. And with, apart from, um, from Barclay Manor there, you could see pretty well down to English Bay. So the views would be nice. As I say, faces west like the girls' bedroom. And so there was plenty of, uh, of sunlight and so on. A, a great place to work. And she had her own private balcony and so on. So, two to the boys' bedroom. Remember, the office was also a boys' bedroom. We're not going to go in there. But this was a, a bedroom for one boy. Um, several things here. See the flag here on the wall there? That's the original Canadian flag when Canada was part of the British Empire. It's called a um, defaced ensign. Um, defaced because it's got the Canadian coat of arms on it. And that changed, of course, in 1963 when Canada adopted the, the um, maple leaf. Um, you know what these are? Timber pots. No. Bed warmers. Oh. This one, fill it with hot water, put it on your bed before you went and go to bed. Or this one, fill it with the embers from the fire in the evening. And uh, put, again, put it in your bed to, to warm it up. Notice the wallpaper. Yes. Um, two walk-in closets here. Remember the Rattenbury's famous walk-in closets? Behind me, games the boys would have played. Um, books they would have read. Stamp albums. Boy Scout equipment. And here, a rather fine book, Chambers Dictionary, not Chambers. What's the American Dictionary? Webster. Webster's. Webster's Dictionary. That's illustrated. That was that was printed in, in the late 19th century. Um, the type is exceedingly small. Um, and one thing, and it's actually illustrated a lot, that I don't want to have an illustration, but the one thing that struck me when I first saw it was that if you didn't break your back trying to lift it, you go blind trying to read it, in fact. <laughs> Looks very heavy. <laughs> so, here we have the the, bed, the bathroom that never was, or at least it wasn't for several years. That's an original claw foot tub from 1900. Um, and it's fully operational now. It works completely, although you'll see on the toilet there a notice that says it's uh, out of commission. There's a good reason for that. 
there's a hairline crack in the system and we can't just phone a plumber and say give us a Victorian system. Somebody is out looking at the moment and has been for a week or two for a system in which case it will then be reinstalled and uh, but usually the whole thing functions perfectly. The side here. He was a bookbinder by trade and a printer. This was the sort of thing he did. Companies didn't have filing cabinets, they had bound ledgers in those days. And so they'd send them off to Rody to bind them up. This is rather fine. This is called Buckram. It's a reinforced cotton, leather trimmings, nice fine document, particularly when it was new. But the interesting thing I find about this is that um, this was used every day in an office. You wouldn't really want to carry that around. You? No. <laughs> if you want to go down there. Okay. This room has changed, obviously. Um, we're going down those stairs in a minute to the kitchen. The cook had a bedroom. He lived in, had a bedroom at that end of this, this room here. The rest was an attic for storage. Okay. okay. So... Now, obviously, we use it for our own purposes. We put on exhibitions, for instance, about a month ago, we had a tea seminar. We had a sommelier come in and talk about teas from all over the world. And behind you, we had another gentleman who gave a lecture on teapots. He, had a, he has a collection of 400 teapots. Each one of these is from his collection, and they're all teapots. They're all functioning teapots. Wow. I'm, I'm a big tea drinker. Okay. This is... <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's quite amazing. 400 of them, you say? Yeah, 400. Yes. Yeah, these are part of his collection. Wow. So, these drawers all contain artifacts and so on. If you wander around on your own, they're more than welcome to open the drawers, all sorts of good stuff in them. That would make an interesting read. I love parks, and yeah. the history of them and stuff. Have you been to Van Dersen? Not yet, because they have the light display on, That's right. and I want to go when it's, when it's just normal. I'm a guide there, and on the board of directors there. It's well worth a visit. Well worth a visit. I plan on going, I guess, like I say, I want to go when yeah. it's, when it's yeah. not a special event. And when the weather's good. Well, isn't it always good inside there? <laughs> This is an example of the sort of exhibition we put on. Obviously, this is a photographic exhibition, and um, this changes all the time. Great. I'm going to have to make a point of attending a couple of your exhibitions on a special day, yeah, if, well, I'm, if, if, you, if I'm we, down. They're, they're in the web. We have a good website. Okay, and what's the website address? Just You don't need to know that. Just uh, Google in Rody. Oh, okay. And that'll, get, that'll take you straight to us, and it gives you complete... Description of the house, the artifacts, um, the collection, what's on and so on. Just want to stop here for a moment. You, you, you obviously know Vancouver. This is English Bay. This was taken in 1907. Um, this is the West End, where we are. We're actually in here. Um, you can see that apartment blocks are already starting to, um, to spring up. This was obviously taken in the summer, popular then, as it is obviously today. This was taken down in 1938. Not sure why. Um, I think it's a great pity. I think it would be great to have a pier and pan stand on the end and all that sort of good stuff. But whatever the reason they decided not to. I wonder if maybe people were, if there was an accident, somebody dove off and hurt themselves. I don't think anybody would have cared in those days. Now this was, was a pantry. So obviously it's not the same as it was, but the kitchen here is pretty well the same. <coughs> so the reason that's like it is, that was the, the original pantry. Uh, we rent this place for weddings and parties and that sort of thing, and that's why there's that sort of minimal uh, catering stuff there. But this is the kitchen, looks pretty well what it would have looked like at the time. Not the original range. Um, this was built actually in Wisconsin in about 1860, but it was donated to us, and it's where their range would have been. And remember, 
the master bedroom is right on the other side of that wall, which is why, and that this would have been kept fired up 24 hours a day, and consequently that's um, that's why uh, that, that, that's why the bedroom is there, and, and uh, obviously from the point of view of heat. So, what else can I? Oh, Mrs. Rowley was four foot eight. Remember? That's, yes. That sink was installed for her. Um, my Nana was pretty sure she would have loved to sink like that. <laughs> and the rest of this stuff in here, they'd have used it, they'd have eaten in here quite a lot. This table contains stuff from the time, a lot of stuff you'd recognize. Potato masher, whisk, meat grinder and so on. Um, spice jars, cookbooks and so on. A bread maker here, a dough maker, that's a, that's a um, butter maker. And, uh, and so on. So that's the tour, but you're more than welcome.